Hi, I'm Akasha, and I'm right now I'm at the Fried Chilies Food Network Studio. Today I'm going to show you one of the best cake recipes that you'll ever make. It is called cake batik. The thing is, right now we're in the Ramadan season. And before Ramadan season, we're basically preparing for the celebrities of Idul Fitri. So there's a lot of baking and cooking going on, and we're, we're going to make a lot of savory snacks and cakes. So what I'm going to show you today is something called cake batik. I'll tell you why it's called cake batik later, you'll see. And it's actually one of the easiest things you will ever make, and it tastes like heaven, I swear. Anyway, because it's so easy, there's like four ingredients in basically three to four steps. Trust me, even your kids can do it, come on. So what you're going to have is one stick of butter. This is actually like half a stick, <laughs> but you'll need one whole stick of butter. And then you'll have Milo, like 200, 400 grams of Milo. And it can be substituted with cocoa powder or basically any uh, chocolate-based powder that you can find in your grocery store. The thing is, all these brands will um, influence what the cake tastes like. So it's up to you to really experiment with all these things. And then you're going to have a packet of biscuits, which will be the main bulk of the cake. And then you have condensed milk. This will make everything sweet. Anyway, what you do first is basically you melt the butter. You you should heat the oven, eh, the oven, oh my god, I'm terrible, the stove, <laughs> you heat the stove, and then let the butter melt till it's very nice and consistent like oil, although it won't be as bad as oil, I think. Anyway, the next step is to put a bit of condensed milk. It's basically one tin of condensed milk, and you can, can you hear the sizzling noises? Yes. You can feel the heat. Oops. You can see it bubbling and see it boiling, looking really, really nice there. So you just keep on stirring until it's, it's a nice consistent mixture, you see? So I'm just going to keep on stirring this. And just let it boil. And afterwards, once this is cons consistently creamy and smooth, that's, that's the main texture you're trying to get. Because this will be the basis for the chocolate sauce, which you will pour over the biscuits to make the brownie cake. So I'm just going to pour a bit of the Milo here, you can see, just pour a bit and then you mix it up, you just mix it all up, just keep, just keep the stove heated up and just continue mixing it up. The thing is this will take around 15 minutes because you need to get the texture really really nice and smooth. You can actually let your kids or anybody else do it for you because it's, it's just plain stirring, you know. So just mix that up. And actually, just to speed things up for you, I've actually done a previous batch. And I'm going to show you the consistency of it. You don't understand. Oh, it has to look very, very gooey. Very gooey and very smooth. But the thing is, you have to constantly keep on stirring it, you see, to, to, so that the texture is all right. And with this, I am going to pour down, pour it down, the biscuits. The biscuits, on how you prepare the biscuits, is basically a whole packet, depending on how much you want. Oops. The more you want, the more biscuits you use, the more thicker the cake will be, and the less biscuits you use, basically, it will be more chocolate. So it depends on the balance of chocolate and biscuits you want. It can be crunchy or gooey, depending on how you break the biscuits. The thing is, you need to break the biscuits so that it will be, so that you can layer on top of each other. It's, so some, it's something like a layer cake, you see, something like a brownie layer cake. But anyway, what you have to do is you have to break the biscuits. It doesn't really matter what size it is. You can get anybody to break it up for you, and it's, it's basically like a really fun thing to do. You see, you break it up, and then while this, while the chocolate, while the chocolate sauce is boiling away, I am going to pour the biscuits inside the pot because it's easier but what you have to do is you have to make sure that the chocolate is already in a nice consistent texture and you you take you switch off the stove before everything gets heated up you switch off the stove just mix it up just a little bit more to continue getting a nice texture and then you can pour the little bit of biscuits inside See, you can do this by hand. You can get anybody to do it. Get you can if you don't want to use a pot, you can get a, you can use a nice big bowl. 
and you just mix it up. Just mix it all up. Pour as much as you want, all the biscuits that you've broken, and then you have to mix it all up. The thing, the thing about this step is that you have to make sure every side of the biscuit is covered. You see? Yeah. So I'm just going to mash it all up. And it doesn't matter if like the biscuits get broken or if it gets all powdery or if it gets too chunky. It's really up to you depending on what you want. The basis of this, of this recipe is that it's all experimentation. It's all fun. So you just mix it all up. Can you get a visual of this? You can see it all covered really, really nice. See? Oh, look at that. You don't understand, but I'm here at the studio, and this smells amazing. It really does. I mean, if I wasn't fasting, I'll be all over this right now. Trust me. Anyway, so once all this is covered, you will pour it on the tray. You can use the tray that you want to serve it in. Basically, what I've done is I've laid it all down. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be really precise or really thick. What I did was just put a couple of biscuits together just to make it flat. You know, it's a lazy, it's really a lazy recipe. Anyway, I'm going to pour this in. This is actually, ooh, this is actually a bit too little, but you can put in as much biscuits as you want. Ugh. Oh, look at that. Honestly, just, just look at this. Oh, it's really, really messy. And trust me, one thing, it can get really messy, but because it's so good, it doesn't really matter. See, oh. I'm just going to let you appreciate this. Like, just let you appreciate this. So basically, once this is done, you just have to like swipe it around the tray. Hold on, let me just put this here. You swipe it around the tray, and you make it really nice and really... You just have to crush it in, like press it together to make sure all the layers are like really, really sponged in together because you don't want any air holes, okay? You don't want air holes, so you just push it in. It doesn't matter, you can do it by hand, actually, if you really want to get messy. And you, if you want an excuse to lick your fingers, this is the time, trust me. Just make sure that to watch everybody around you, because the bowl with the chocolate will definitely get licked up with this. Trust me. So what you do, you can just mix it up. The thing is, I normally do this with my siblings, you see. So then we, at this stage, we'll get all of us will get like a bunch of spoons and forks, and we just press it in together. And it doesn't really matter, you know, if you end up smacking somebody in the face because it'll get covered in chocolate and it's really good. So, you know, you just it's a, it's a nice thing to do, not only by yourself at 3 o'clock in the morning, but, you know, with a whole bunch of friends. This is actually a, half of this serving that I normally do. So normally you can get, you can have like, a whole big tray of, of cake bati. So anyway, you press this in, and where this goes is it goes to the fridge for at least three hours because you have to let it set, because the cold... The, the cold temperature will let it just sponge together and in the end you will end up with a very very gooey brownie which I'm going to show you in a bit but I'm just going to press this in just to emphasize to you that it's really really important to press this in okay and make sure you get all the sides covered so that it's easier for you to cut it later because I mean you know you can you can spoon it out but it's you know if you want to be nice and civil it's better if you cut it into slices cut into slices like this Right here is the finished product. Can you see? Ta I mean, heaven has got to have this. Trust me. It only takes such a short while to do this, and the thing is, it tastes so good. And I'm actually going to show you what. See, you can. See, you know why it's called cake bate? It's because of all these layers. It looks a bit like a bate pattern. Bate is an art form, like a painting art form that we have here in Malaysia. So you can see all the layers of the biscuit and the chocolate just glue it together. And it doesn't matter if it's powdery or chunky, because in the end, oh, I can't. I'm fasting right now. So anyway, so this is basically the cake butter recipe. My hands are all gooey, and yours will get gooey too. Please continue watching our hangouts on fridechilies.com. I'm Akasha, and this recipe is actually up right now. And you can also check it at our website, www.fridechilies.com. Please tune in for our next episodes. Bye.